Okay, um, I apologize if you are mid-thought. Uh, I'm just mindful of time and I want to make sure that we get the whole picture together, quite literally. Okay, so if you're not quite there yet, just pause and look up because I don't want you to miss any crucial steps of logic, okay? Let's have a think about this. I've done a little bit of algebraic working before I leap to my diagram, so let's just make sure we know what we're doing here, right? I've broken apart this single argument, the argument of a quotient, into two separate arguments. It's the difference of the arguments. So there's the numerator, or it was the numerator. There's the denominator, or it was. And then on my third line, you can see what I've done is I've factorized out um, a minus sign from each one, right? Because I'm trying to make clear, like in the first example, you know how z minus 1 was on the inside? So 1 was your reference point. And then z minus 3, 3 was your reference point. So with this z minus whatever, that's what gives me there the reference points that I need. So these things are fixed, and then z will move around them. Okay? So now I am ready to start putting on my argand diagram. Where is minus 2? plus i. I'm going to be over here in the second quadrant, yeah? Now that we know in advance that these reference points are going to be hollow circles, I might as well plot them as hollow circles now. So I'm going to go ahead and put that one right there. Uh, and then I've also got, I just realized it looks like an O, but anyway, we'll run with it. Uh, I've also got 2 plus 3 i, so here's 2, and then I'm going to go up to 3, so I'll put it there. Okay. Hollow circles are ready. Now, there's a semicircle, or rather there are two semicircles that run through uh, these points if they're the ends of the diameter, right? There's a semicircle that goes around that way and a semicircle that goes around that way, okay? So I just need to think, if I'm going anti-clockwise, which one is my starting point? Can you tell me? It's the first one, right? It literally goes from the first one to the second one, wherever they happen to be positioned, okay? So I'm going to go anti-clockwise from here to here. So very roughly speaking, if you've got a pencil there, like if you're not graphing in pencil, you are bananas, because these are really quite hard to do um, accurately from the first time. Um, you're going to have something that runs sort of around here, right? You okay with that? Um, you'd do that lightly, and then you'd sort of put it in uh, a little more closely. Now. I have the distinct advantage of having had a go at this earlier, so there are some features that I know about that maybe you have not yet found, but we're going to find them together. We didn't do this for any of the others, but what I want after this is two things. Number one, the Cartesian equation. We've seen this before, right? Um, this is a complex equation, z's and i's and all that kind of thing. I want something that is just x's and y's, right? How do I do that? Well, um, I need to know to define a semicircle. It's the same as if I'm defining a circle, right? I need to know the center of my circle, semicircle. And I also need to know what other piece of information? Radius. The radius, thank you. Okay. Center, radius, I'll be good to go. Now I've given you, because I'm nice like that, I've given you some nice points here, some nice coordinates, right? Because they're symmetrical about the imaginary axis, when you take the middle, that's why you're on the imaginary axis itself. So you know that's going to be zero for the real component. What's the imaginary component? Two i. It's going to be halfway between i and three i. So yes, it is two i. So I've got the center, that's good. And now I need to know the radius. Um, there's lots of ways you can find the radius, right? Uh, this would give you the radius, or this would give you the radius. Is it a complicated calculation to work out what the radius should be? It's not too hard, right? I mean, yeah, you could just use the distance formula here. You've got, um, you know these distances, don't you? Right? That's two. Well, it's, it's negative two, you've gone that way. Um, this distance here is one, thank you very much. So this is a one. To use Pythagoras with me, come on, that's going to be root five. five. Fantastic. There's my radius. Okay. So therefore, from that argument, I can say the Cartesian equation will be, take a breath, something. Sorry, actually, that's not that's not in brackets. Uh, x squared, because have a think. I haven't moved anywhere horizontally. I'm on right in the center. Plus, what's my y going to be? Because you know where the center is, right? It's been moved up two units, very good. So I'm going to get y minus 2 squared. And then what's on the right-hand side? It, with the radius squared, which in this case is root 5 times root 5, 
you get five. Okay? Now clearly this Cartesian equation doesn't tell you everything because um, that, that is the whole circle, right? But I don't want the whole thing. Uh, I need to provide some words here to say, like you can't even put a, um, a domain restriction on it either, right? Because if you said, oh, it's going to be this part here, you'll get a part on the top as well, right? So just having the diagram there is the whole point. Now I said Cartesian equation. The other important information is the intercepts. Now, if your diagram is incredibly awesome, like mine, you may be able to read off your intercepts, but generally, um, you don't want to have that level of, invest that level of confidence, confidence in your diagram. And we actually have an equation here that will help us. Does this semicircle have y-intercepts? Yes, it does, okay? And I can find it by putting in x equals zero, right? Let's go ahead. y-intercept x equals 0. Here's the equation right here. You're just going to get y minus 2 squared equals 5. Are you okay with that? So y minus 2 is going to be equal to... I'm taking the square root, so plus minus, square root of 5. And then you add 2 to both sides, which gives you this. Now, I've got two solutions here, because I'm actually solving for the equation of not a semicircle, I'm solving for the equation of a circle. So you expect two solutions. Which one is the one that I want? It's got to be the negative one, right? Because it's, it's lower. You can see from your diagram, right? So I would say, but um, y has to be less than 2. It's only got to be on the bottom side here, right? y is less than 2. Therefore, y has to be 2 take away root 5. So that's my point down there. In fact, I'll go ahead and I'll mark that in. 2 minus root 5. 3, 5 again? Like 2.3, 7? 2 point, someone help me out here. 3, 6. So that's what this is. That's why it's so close, right? It's negative 0.36, right? So 2 take away root 5. Uh, and then, sorry, say it again? Uh, minus 0.236. Sorry, got it, right. Got my um, decimal places mixed up. I've got my y-intercepts. I need to find some x-intercepts as well, so I'll do that. These are even nicer numbers. When y equals 0, you, can e you might be able to look at that and tell me. Yeah, have a look, right? You get um, 0 minus 2 squared. So this becomes x squared plus 4 equals 5. Yes? x squared equals 1. And in this case, oh, that's nice. I actually do want both of these solutions because you can see it from the diagram. Negative 1 and 1. should put that 1 somewhere clear so I don't mix it up with the other one. Okay? Now that I've got that all right, I actually need to fill this in. I put it dotted because I was not confident at the beginning, but I'm pretty happy with that. There's a semicircle I want. Anti-clockwise from the first point to the second.